Matthew 6, 24. Um, a, a really good passage about serving God and wealth. Matthew 6, 24. Here you go. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. What does it mean in this passage when it's talking about serving wealth? What does that mean? What's that concept? What do you think it means to serve wealth? Very good. Say that again. Did you guys hear that? That's a great answer. And he's really right. It's, it's allowing what you own, what you acquire, to determine how you act, right? And it's part of going back to what we said last um, half a class. It's letting what you have keep you from doing maybe what God is calling you to do. Um, chapter 3 in Faith and Money is kind of fascinating to me. And you guys are going to have to participate in this because otherwise it will be kind of goofy. But I hope you picked up, did you guys, did you see the charts in there that talked about um, the different types of thought? And did you get the, did you get that when you, when you looked at that? It talked about Plato and how Plato's kind of his common theme was limits on wealth supporting a class system. The unique idea was common property. Um, but the discrepancies was, were that he spoke against wealth, but he was rich himself, right? And they said that about Aristotle. He believed in limits on wealth supporting a class system. He had private property and he spoke against wealth, but what? He was wealthy, right? Plutarch, same thing. Limits on wealth, condemned lending with interest. He spoke against it, but he was rich. Zeno, limits on wealth distinction between things good and bad, but he spoke against wealth. Fascinating how all of those guys were outspoken, but in the, in the background, had a ton of money. Anybody we know that does that anymore? Well, maybe. Politics. Um, <laughs> Roman thought, right? Cicero, private property rights, state preserves, um, believed his unique idea was the equality of goods, virtues of, of, stat, of state, People have the right to pursue wealth, right? And again, the discrepancy was that he was wealthy. He owned 14 farms and estates. <laughs> Cato, private property rights were sacred. Valued the farming class of people, right to own. And again, he was wealthy, valued farming. Seneca, same thing. It's that same kind of response. And then they review the Hebrews, right? And did you pick up on the Hebrews? So the area of distinction, land ownership and use, the ideal was land is God's, it's be managed well, not to be abused. But sometimes the Hebrews didn't allow good management. Leviticus 26, 35. Sabbath rest for the land in the Jubilee, year of Jubilee. It was encouraged, but it wasn't always implemented, right? And the poor, they were valued, but the poor were often neglected, which happens so often in our cultures now. Well, I thought what I would do with this, as I read through the charts, you know, my first kind of thought was, well, how does this apply to what we're talking about? And then I realized that there is for us a very real sense of we say something in how we live. In other words, we communicate something about who we are by what we do. And I thought, well, it might be helpful as we look at this to think about some of the people in our culture and what our perception is of them and what the truth is of how they live. So I'm going to give you a name. You guys have to yell this out when we get down the road here. Um, their common theme, right? Their common theme, the unique idea in how they do what they do or what they've promoted, right? If there's a discrepancy, discrepancy, and if there's a faith conflict, all right? And I want to say right up front as we look at this, that our job now is not to say, you know, we don't know where they are in their, in their spiritual walk. We don't know if they're Christians or some of them we know, but 
if there's a faith conflict, maybe there isn't. Maybe it aligns with who they say they are, okay? <clears throat> so what I want you guys to do, I'm going to give you a name, and you guys can kind of help me fill out the chart here, right? First name, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, what's his common theme? What are, and these are, can kind of go together. His common theme or unique idea? Nothing, no right or wrongs here. Bill Gates, what do you got? Philanthropy. He's what? Philanthropy. Philanthropy. There's some of that, yeah. What else? What's his unique idea? How do you make his money? Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft. What else do we see there? Unique ideas. Was he creative in what he did? Pretty. I mean, he was kind of invent. He's been inventive, right? So um, we know he gives. We know that Microsoft is kind of his unique thing. Would you say um, business ideals, maybe? Any discrepancies that you see in his life? Did he accomplish what he said he was going to accomplish? What do you guys think? Did he? Would you say mostly? So who he said he was, this is what he did, yeah? He acted on it. Faith conflict? Pretty, uh, pretty obvious that he wasn't motivated by spiritual things, right? So um, it conflicts but it um, aligns with who he said he was. Okay, let's look at another one. How about Donald Trump? Or the Donald, as I like to call him, because... What do you guys think? What's, what's Donald Trump's idea? Get him to me. Send him up here. Common theme. Donald Trump. Failed yeah, he did. Failed attempts. But what would, what would the kind of the common theme be? Um, you're fired. <laughs> right? He was um, business, um, his business acumen. What do you want to, you know what I'm saying there? Right? He was a business guy. What else you got for him? Talk to me. You've seen him on television, right? What do you see as a unique idea of his? It, uh, you kind of said it. Uh, how about success? So you C-C-E-S-S. -S. Yeah? The discrepancy, though, did you guys know that he's had, like, what, five bankruptcies? Four bankruptcies? Did you know that about him? He believes in success, and he's fired a ton of people, but he's had numerous bankruptcies see there and faith conflict what do you guys think he is a pretty outspoken non-christian right so actually it kind of aligns with who he says he is there how about um, Oprah or O as I like to call her how about Oprah what's her common theme She what? Give, gives away cars. <laughs> what else we got for Oprah? What do you think? Well, that's okay. Um, big enterprise. Yeah, big enterprise. It is, isn't it? Unique idea? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> big, you know, she's one of the biggest property holders in Hawaii. Really? I love it. I've been by her place. It's on Maui. It's massive. Yeah. Uh, women. There is that. Yeah. Yeah. Empowering women. How about giving? She gives a ton on the show. I or used to, right? Giving. How about discrepancies to what you see there? Yeah. Highly wealthy and she's pretty gifted I mean she's probably I mean, she's earned it right interesting enterprise how about faith conflict 
again, I, I'm not calling her out on this. But, um, we've actually got a, one of our Biola alumnas that works for O Magazine who's very close to her. So it's kind of interesting that we've got somebody that's, that's working with her. I, I would think that maybe you could say that um, she says, you know, since this has gone online, we have to be real careful what we say. She says she's a Christian, right? And um, maybe won't, doesn't necessarily align with our person. She's what? Yeah, yes. So we'll just do that. Okay. Um, well, this one's a dangerous one. And I'm going to stay away from Obama because I did have him on my list, but we're not going to talk there. But let's go for Hillary. How about Hillary? And we just call her the Hill, you know, because we're, we're close. Common theme. Hillary, what's Hillary's common theme? Women in politics. Women in politics. Yeah, that's true. How about women in power? <laughs> we'll go with politics. That's much safer. Politics. And a unique idea? That's really good. Yeah. Um, erase the glass or break the glass ceiling. Good. And world peace, right? Um, <laughs> discrepancies. You see anything there in what Hillary says and what she does? Who knows Hillary well? Just be, raise your hands high. Just kidding. <laughs> Any discrepancies? I think this, if, if these are themes, I think they're probably kind of close to who she says she is. Um, I've, I've heard that um, there's huge power issues in her, in her relationships with others, right? I just heard she's pretty vicious. Yeah. And see, that's why if you guys talk, then if I write it up here, it's not me. <laughs> and I don't think Hillary will be watching this, but you never know. Um, faith conflict. Now, I think Bill and Hillary would say that they're Christians, right? Um, and I probably would go with this. Don't you guys, would you guys agree with that? May not quite align with this. Um, here's one. Getting close to the end. How about Bono? <laughs> Anybody know Bono personally? I'm just asking. Last time we hung out was a long time ago. Um, common theme for Bono. What do you see there? Philanthropy. Yeah, philanthropy. Giving, right? How about, um, how about unique idea? Where does he like to direct his giving? Environment. Didn't he do some AIDS, AIDS stuff? Any discrepancies in who he says he is and who, he, who you perceive him to be? Uh, this seems to align to me. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know him personally, but it seems to align. And I would say that's true here as well from what I've heard, that he kind of aligns with who he says he is. Here's an interesting one. How about this one? Mother Teresa. You guys who know who that is? Who's Mother Teresa? Who's Mother Teresa? One of the missionaries. Yeah, yeah. She worked with the Dalit. She worked with the Untouchables. Um, she was an outspoken advocate for those who did not have a voice, right? So her common theme was what? Service, missions. Service, mission. What else? Unique idea. Yeah, voice to the voiceless. How about uh, discrepancies? When Mother Teresa died, they found a diary that she had kept for most of her life. And um, there were huge blocks of time in her life where she questioned God, where she questioned her faith, where she was uncertain about what she really believed, where she wasn't sure if she was doing what she should be doing. So huge 
periods of time. Towards the end of her life, she kind of came to peace with God and service. So um, I would say questions during ministry. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Maybe not. Good, good. Why? What? Well, Give me some more. Good, good thought. Really good thought. Yeah, and she was the thing that was. The thing that was unique to me about it was that she never came out and said, "You know what." I don't know if this is all true. I, you know, I just, I'm not sure this is right. She just kind of wrote those thoughts down. And I think it was a, a reflection. It was almost a, communications, a communication to God to say, here's what I'm struggling with, God. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay in our faith. I really do. I think there are times in our lives where we go, how did that happen, you know? Why do good things happen to bad, you know, bad, no, bad things happen to good people? You know, there are times where we question things like that. Great, great, great call. How about faith conflict? I'd say the same thing, right? That, you know, it's all right to, to question. Okay, one more. Rick Warren. Rick Warren. Now, Rick Warren is a real well-known personality. Anybody go to Rick Warren's church? Really? Usually there's at least a hand or two. What do you think about Rick Warren? What's his common theme? Purpose driven life. Is, uh, yeah, purpose driven life. <laughs> Every time I've done this, that's the first thing that gets out there. Have you read The Purpose Driven Life? It's a pretty good read. You should read it if you haven't. How about Unique Ideas? Purpose-driven life. <laughs> um, I would say there's a ton of service and a, and a call to evangelism. Right? How about discrepancies? Here's where if you went to his church, I'd have to be really careful. Uh, there have been those that say, that have been uh, critical of him for certain things around the church, maybe... Um, resources, those types of things. But did you know that he doesn't take any money from any of the things that he's produced? That it all goes back? I've got an article I want to read you about him. And I would say that he is one where this aligns. What he says he is, he is. And he's living that way. Let me read you um, a little information on him. Get all organized here. This is an interview that was done with Paul Bradshaw. And um, he's, they said, people, this is Rick speaking. He said, people ask me, what is the purpose of life? And I respond, in a nutshell, life is preparation for eternity. We were made to last forever, and God wants us to be with him in heaven. One day my heart is going to stop, and that will be the end of my body, but not the end of me. I may live to 60 to 100 years on earth, but I'm going to spend trillions of years in eternity. This is a warm-up act, the dress rehearsal. God wants us to practice on earth what we will do forever in eternity. We were made by God and for God, and until you figure that out, life isn't going to make sense. I love it. I mean, he's calling us out, right? He's calling us out to really seriously think about what we do in this life and how it impacts eternity. He goes on to say... Um, this past year has been the greatest year of my life, but has also been the toughest with my wife Kay getting cancer. I used to think that life was hills and valleys. You go through a dark time, then you go through the mountaintop, back and forth. I don't believe that anymore. Rather than life being hills and valleys, I believe that it's kind of like two rails on a railroad track, and at all times you have something good and something bad in your life. That's pretty profound. That's pretty amazing. No matter how good things are in your life, there's always something that needs to be worked on. Fascinating. He um, goes on to talk about how, the, how money is used and how um, he was committed that they, as they made more money, they, they acquired more things, it would not change their lifestyle and who they were. And I think we can really kind of learn from that. So you say, why did we do this little exercise up here? Well, I wanted you to realize that there are certain things that go on in our lives that affect 
how people view us. If I put Rick B up here, right, and I looked at my common themes, I would hope it's something like um, stewardship and God's resources and how we, how we do what we do with them. And my unique idea would be to change your lives so that you can live in a way that would be in alignment with scripture, right? But when I get to discrepancies, you know, how do I deal with my own resources? Am I, am I wise steward of what God has entrusted to me? And you guys can see that. I mean, you guys know by how I live and how I act and what I do, maybe not so much by what I say, right? And how's the faith conflict? Does, it, does what I do align with what scripture says about what we're supposed to be doing? I pray so. All of you could put your names up here and you would have a common theme. You'd have a unique idea of who you really are, right? And you might have a discrepancy and you might have a faith conflict. So I guess the reason we do this is to realize that how we act, what we do and how we act, people are watching, right? What was that verse we read, right? Observing, you will see by your actions. So that's kind of why we go through this process. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.